Hello lovely ladies, welcome to Jewish Women's Learning. I'm really, really missing being together, but I'm really excited that we can keep learning throughout this, this time virtually. Um, and tonight we're actually looking at a Jewish perspective on the coronavirus. There's been a lot of information going around and I think it's really useful for us to go back to basics and to think about what Judaism says at a time like this when we're all kind of battling and struggling to make sense of the really difficult situation that we're all in. Um, and one of the things that's been coming to my mind so much is the story of the Tower of Babel. Um, we have this group of people who decide they're going to build a tower that reaches the heavens and they're going to infiltrate and they're going to be more powerful than Hashem. And they grow and build and they are so focused on their goal. They're using all of this engineering to build and build and build and build. And in the middle of the build, Hashem creates a situation where they all start speaking different languages and it becomes a disaster and they can't communicate, they can't continue with the build and we have the collapse of the tower. In a lot of ways, I feel like some of that humility that was thrown upon the people to realize that they don't control the world and that Hashem runs the world has been thrown on us in a little bit of a way too. We've built this amazing tower of Babel with all of our technology and all of our medical knowledge and all of our advancements and our economy, everything that we think helps us to control our lives, right, and to be the masters of our own destiny. And then this tiny little microscopic virus comes along and disrupts our plans. And the truth is that actually, in normal everyday life, we also don't have that much control. We have the illusion of control. And what's happened with all of the events that are taking place in the world is that our illusion of control has been really challenged and really shattered. Um, and it's something I know personally that I struggle with. You know, I, I hold on to this idea that if I'm well enough organized, and if I'm smart enough, and if I do things the right way, then I can control the situations that I'm in. But the truth is for all of us that the sooner we work out that Hashem runs the world and we don't have to, the better and the easier our lives are going to be. And it's one of the reasons I have to say that I love Shabbat so much. Because as soon as you light those candles, as soon as the sun goes down, whatever you've done, whatever you've completed, that's great. And whatever you haven't, we'll just have to wait till afterwards. And I was talking to one of you this week about how you're finding the situation and you explained to me that actually it feels like going into Shabbat or into a festival because we know that this lockdown is coming and that we're going to need to self-isolate and that you're trying to get everything done. But ultimately, after the deadline, whatever you haven't got done, we'll just have to wait until we're out of this situation again. Um, so today I want to explore some of the key Jewish concepts that come up in general in Judaism, but also that are really relevant to the situation that we're in today. And I want to quote a few of the rabbis that I've heard who have said things that I think um, can help ground us as we journey through this together. Um, and to start off with, I think it's just really important that we recognize the, the Jewish imperative to be a good citizen in the country that you're in. And this is something that has sat with us throughout time in all kinds of different situations where w whatever place we find ourselves in exile, there is a requirement on us to respect the laws of the land, to recognize authority. I mean, it's amazing. We have a, a blessing for when you see a ruler, it, not a Jewish ruler, a secular ruler who has the power to determine life or death. There's a special blessing that you say to recognize the significance of secular rulers as well. And each week in synagogue, we always bless um, our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, the, the royal family, the prime minister, the ministers, the councillors. We take this role of being good citizens very seriously. And so regardless of what you might think at the moment about the restrictions that are being put on us, if you're here in New Zealand or if you're listening overseas and you've got similar quarantine or isolation restrictions put on you, whatever you think about them, the truth is we're obligated to be good citizens in the country that we're in. The other thing I want to point out from a Jewish perspective um, is that we are always balancing paradox in Judaism. It's something that we sit with all the time and that we are taught to get more and more comfortable with. And one of the ones that comes to mind is from Rabbi Hillel, also Kadima, our Jewish school here that has had to close its doors temporarily um, as we all move to, to keep each other safe. 
Um, the school motto uh, is a quote from Rabbi Hillel. We're balancing these two things. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? And this is what we have to balance here. You know, even with the things like the panic buying and everything else, we need to go, I need to take responsibility to protect myself and my family. If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? But we need to stay kind, to look after each other and to keep finding ways to support each other. Because if I'm only for myself, what am I? Now in Judaism, we are our brother's keepers. We are responsible for each other. You know, this is something that is a principle that's carried us right through from when Hashem speaks to Cain after he's killed Abel and he asks, where's your brother? Um, right through to the different laws that we have around if you build a roof, it's really important that if there's access to that roof, there's a fence around it so nobody falls off it. Or that if you've created a big hole, that you cover the hole so that no one else can fall in. And so for us as Jews... We have a huge responsibility when it comes to this virus. Isolating, keeping social distance and making sure that, that we are respecting the medical advice that's currently being given to us is not just important to keep ourselves safe. We actually have a moral obligation when it comes to every other person that if we're carrying the virus and we don't know about it, we need to put in place those fences and those covers that will allow us to keep each other safe. And so this is a really strong Jewish principle. And so it's really important that we follow these guidelines as well. Um, as we've spoken about many times before to you, the ladies, pekuach nefesh, this concept of the sanctity of human life is something that guides us always. Um, and I think it's self-explanatory about why that's important in the case of the coronavirus. But I want to go beyond that and to talk a bit more about some of the philosophical questions that we might have at the moment and how Judaism addresses those as well. Because some of this is quite obvious when it comes to a duty of care for others um, or when it comes to the idea of uh, where our moral obligations lie in terms of our behaviour. But actually, there's a whole bunch of psychology, philosophy and spirituality that is being tested, challenged, and brought to the front of our minds at the moment. And thank God we have some beautiful ways in Judaism for dealing with them. Um, one of the, the sayings that always gives me a lot of comfort is that the concept that Hashem creates the cure before the disease. Now, if only that was the case in terms of um, a, a tangible way of dealing with this particular virus. But I actually mean in terms of any situation we find ourselves in, there are already the tools we need to be able to deal with it in that situation. And I was listening to Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs speaking earlier this week from his self-isolation um, through the power of the technology that we have and that we're enjoying right now in our class. And he said, who knows if all of this telecommunication was not created just for this purpose, to help us all get through this challenge with more learning, more connection, more compassion, um, and the ability to be able to keep going and still be able to isolate, to be able to be together emotionally, socially, and spiritually, even if we can't be together physically. And so it's it's interesting food for thought, but there's there are huge benefits from the technology that we have now. And perhaps in the past, we've been using it in ways that haven't been so health promoting. And now we have the opportunity to really make the most of it and use it in a way that will help keep us healthy and well, emotionally, spiritually, even physically, you know, ordering online um, from the supermarket instead of going there ourselves, things like that. It's a pretty spectacular technology to have access to when the, the world has so dramatically and so quickly changed right before our eyes. Um, and I think one of the things that is top of mind for people is trying to understand why this is happening. And in Judaism, we always sit with the why. You know, we understand Hashem works in mysterious ways. The, the Jewish value system is that nothing's accidental. There's no such thing as coincidence. And so everything that we see happening is for a reason and ultimately for good. Um, and there are times in which we don't understand why things are happening and we need to, to have faith, have emunah and bitachon, trust, 
that ultimately Hashem's got a plan, and even if we don't know what it is, that it'll be for good, that we also need to balance that with our hishtat lut, our effort. And we're always trying to get that balance right. What do what steps do I need to take? As Jews, we're not meant to rely on miracles. There's that wonderful joke that we've talked about before about the, the guy who's in the flood and the water's rising and he's sitting on the roof of his house and along comes a boat and the boat says, jump on. He says, no, Hashem will save me. Then along comes a helicopter and the winchman comes down and says, jump on, jump on, the waters are rising. He says, no, Hashem will save me. Then he reaches heaven, he dies, drowns. And he says, Hashem, what gives? I relied on you. Nothing happened. And Hashem says, I sent you a boat and a helicopter. Buddy, what more do you want? And and it's kind of that balance that we always have to get right between what's the effort, the hishtat loot that we need to put in to partner with Hashem. You know, we have an obligation in this world to draw holiness down and to improve the world that we're in. And we can't just rely on Hashem for that. We're partners in creation. And we're partners in tikkun olam, repairing the world. So that's what we need to be focusing on now as we go into this coronavirus situation. What are the aspects that we can control? What are the aspects that we can't control? And how do we balance effort with faith? And again, there's some nice advice coming through on how we can do that as well. Um, Rabbi Manus Freeman has put out a video recently talking about how this is a real opportunity to break old habits. This is going to shake everything up. It can help us to have a healthier life, better habits, to, to appreciate the things that we do have in our lives and to slow down to a pace where we're spending more time to focus about being better mothers, sisters, um, daughters, um, and and our our family members um, in general, how can we how can we be better for each other? Because we're going to be together, and we have no choice. The um, the value that Judaism has always placed on the home is huge, and yet our lifestyles have been leading us more and more out of the home. And even in terms of our practice of Judaism, so much of the movement of Judaism in the past hundred years has been taking the focus off the home and moving the focus to the synagogue. And this has often left women feeling quite isolated because, you know, there is a lot of, of practice that happens in the synagogue, which is incumbent on men to complete. Um, and again, we can talk about it in the future, but there's some really interesting reasoning around that, you know. When we look back to the story of the 10 spies who didn't have faith in Hashem when they came to the land of Israel. You know, we've got 12 spies, two of them do have faith, believe that we can conquer the land, 10 of them don't. And now we, we see what happens when you get 10 men together, yeah, <laughs> the bad things can happen, that group mentality. And so we have this tikkun, this fix of that, this concept of the minion, that actually you need to get 10 men together to do something that is filled with faith. And that's why we have the minion. Now, the women weren't part of the problem, so they don't need to be part of the solution. This whole thing of gathering 10 men together is something to fix what 10 men did. And the women weren't, weren't involved in this act of a lack of faith. So we're not required for the minion. But at the same time, it can leave women feeling quite separate and quite isolated. Whereas historically, the Jewish home has always, always, always been the focus of Judaism. Judaism's matrilineal. It passes through the mother. The home is so significant and so important. It's the center of everything that happens in, in the Jewish life cycle. And yet, more and more, that kind of Jewish home idea has become a bit disenfranchised as we delegate our Judaism to happen in the synagogue with leadership rather than in our homes. And that's also with education. You know, we delegate our education to those outside the home without thinking about the role that we need to play in terms of education in the home. And again, this is forcing us to do that. Um, Rabbi and I put out a message to the community and, and one of the things that we were talking about, thinking about, is how Judaism knows that being stuck at home can be challenging and we have laws that recognise that. The concept of honour your father and your mother is is you know it's a commandment for a reason because it's not always an easy thing to do the the commandment to educate our children it's not always an easy thing to do and we're going to all be uh, delving into some of those challenges over the coming weeks 
as we try and honour our parents in close proximity or we try and honour them from a distance or our children are trying to honour us and as we navigate the homeschooling that comes with this situation and how we choose to educate our children. Um, and I just want to say, like, I'm here for you. I'm going to keep putting kids' resources up, stories, things that we can use to help with that teaching process. You're also welcome to forward them to your parents if you think it'll help help control them. I got a really funny message, actually, which talked about the role reversal that we're all experiencing as kids, that, you know, our parents used to try and stop us from going out when we were teenagers, and now we're trying to stop our parents going out because it's not safe for them and their demographic to be going out with this with this virus. Um, so we're navigating all of those relationships and Judaism gives us some really good tools to do that. Um, thank God. So to delve into those Jewish values, if you're really into Jewish values, I'd recommend one of the things to read is Pekea Vot. It's in your Sidur, the ethics of the fathers, but you can also get great resources online um, or tune into my husband's Pekea Vot classes that he's been doing for the senior children at Kadima. We'll put some of those online as well. Um, but this this concept of Jewish values and wisdom that comes from our sages from the Mishnah of Bekei Avot is something that is incredibly timeless and so relevant to us today, perhaps more relevant today than in any other time. Um, but it really is that beautiful, timeless stuff. This whole um, situation that we find ourselves in um, is one which can make us feel a little bit broken, like the world is a little bit broken. And I thought it would be useful as well to take a moment to delve into the Hebrew and have a look at one of the lessons that we can learn when we think about it from a language point of view. So um, one of the words for broken um, or for a breakdown is mashbil. And we see that also with the root word shvira, which is fragmented or, or shattered. And interestingly, this word, mashbel, is the same word that we have in the Torah for a birthing stool. The same word that we have for when something is broken or there's a breakdown is the same word that we have for a birthing stool, for when new life is brought into the world. And every moment of brokenness is an opportunity for rebirth. And I think that's something else that we can really hold on to in these tough times is that all the things that we have built in our little Tower of Babel that now we're finding are scary, that they're breaking down, all of them represent opportunities to build up something that's better, that's greater, that's more beautiful. And the history of the Jewish people is 4,000 years of doing that again and again. When we look through our history, we've never been a nation of victims. We take responsibility and we rebuild and we rebuild and we rebuild. And that's something that we can give as a gift to the world as part of our tikkun olam. That we actually say, right now things are feeling really broken, but we're going to go forth, we're going to go strong with kindness, with love, with a sense of responsibility for each other, and we are going to keep rebuilding. Um, and I, th I think it's something that will serve us incredibly well over the coming weeks as we try and navigate this difficult situation. So I just want to wish you all the best of luck as we go through this together. Um, Hashem is with us. I'm here for you. Be in touch. Stay in touch. Keep in touch with the community. There are plenty of ways to connect in. Um, and there are those who are just waiting for, for offering your help and support if that's what you need. So stay in touch. Stay well. Stay safe. And keep working towards rebuilding the things that are feeling a little bit broken right now.